Hello everyone, so we already talked about the knife forecasting methods, very low cost, simple to use methods. So next, we're going to talk about averaging methods. So in averaging methods, the very first one is moving average. So before we dig into this technique, so the idea behind the averaging methods is to deal with the random variation. So if you have a time series which doesn't exhibit any seasonality or trend, it is only build up of random variation. So then the averaging methods are kind of a best choice to use. So averaging methods are also very good uh, when you have when you're trying to produce a short-term forecast with a stationary time series. So when it's a stationary time series, the time series doesn't exhibit any trend. Right, so that's a key point to remember. So when we work with averaging methods, the idea we, uh, the one of the assumptions we have that uh, the smaller variations are due to the random cause, or those are the random variations. Any larger variations have some explanation associated with it. So when I say larger variations, such as a variation due to irregular event, such as COVID-19, a very high spike in demand or very low demand for certain commodities. Otherwise, your time series will exhibit a random variation. So what average does? Average actually smooths out those random variations. So in order to understand the idea of smoothing demand, let's go back to the Excel sheet. So in column B, we have international air travel demand on monthly basis. And in column C, I have added quarterly data set. So which means this is the average of next three months, right? Uh, so C2 represents average for January, February, and March. C5 represents the average for April, May, and June, right? So the formula I'm using here is average, and I'm selecting the numbers for whatever uh, period I need to take the average, right? So that will give me the average demand. So explore the average formula. So from here, so I'm not using the entire data set. So for the explanation purposes, let's pick up first three years of data. So I'm going to add a line chart to represent the monthly demand. So a line chart being added. So this is the monthly demand. As we know that there's some random variation there's some seasonal variation too right well let's ignore the seasonal variation at the moment let's just focus on the random variation so let's select data and add the quarterly data set so you can see here the orange line is the quarterly data set and the blue line is uh, the monthly data set and there's some random variation. So as you start taking the average, your line becomes more smoother. So the idea here is you can smooth out the random variation due to the unknowns. Uh, so that's the whole idea. But given that there's no larger variation, there's no trend, and there are different ways to deal with seasonality. So I will not talk about that at this point. We'll come to that later on. So the averaging methods works very good when you're dealing with the random variation. So if you start taking now yearly, you are going to find out that your line will be more smoother. So you're going to guess something like that. But anyway, from this slide, what we wanted to get out was that as you take the averages, the randomness in the time series gets cancelled. The peaks and valleys, they cancel each other. And you, are you tend to get a smoother line or the, or the smoother time series right so we'll rely on this concept when it comes to moving average so now let's look into forecasting techniques using averaging methods so very first technique we're going to look into is the moving average so in moving average uh, in order to forecast for the current period, we use previous and period values. So let's take an example. So if you have a question like, give me the forecast for period 16 using three points moving average. So three points moving average. So in this case, it's going to be F16. Actual, it's three periods. Actual for period 15 actual for period 14 and actual for period 13 divided by 3. So I'm taking the average for previous three points because I said three points moving average. So if I say five points moving average, I'm going to take the average of previous five points from the historical data or the actual demand. 
So that's how you can read these questions. So in this case, let's say I want to calculate the forecast for August using three points moving average. So again, just to reinforce the point we said earlier. So forecast for August is going to be actual for July, actual for June, plus actual for May divided by three because we set three points moving average. So let's look into one example. So we're going to do both things from here. We'll do some manual calculations and we'll apply Excel formulas too. So let's look into this data set. I have periods given here, month, so items sold, sold, which is the actual. So in this case, let's say in our first example, I want to calculate forecast for December using three points moving average. The forecast for December, so let's say F December, using three points moving average is going to be actual for November, actual for October, actual for September, right? Three, so which means 17 plus 10 plus four, three. So this will give us so 31 over 3, which means around 10.3 units. So using four points, sorry, three points moving average, my forecast for December is 10.3. So similarly, can you calculate uh, forecast for December using five points moving average? Yes, in this case, we're going to have 17 plus 10, 4. 16 plus 8 divide by 5, right? So it was 55 to 5, and you get 11 in this case, right? So that's moving average method. So let's see how you're going to apply this in Excel. So here's the three points moving average. So for three points moving average, for December, I'm going to take the average for previous three periods, which means B13, November, B12, and B11. So my average is going to be from B11 to B13, right? So in order to select the cells, I'm just left clicking and scrolling up, right? Okay, so that's 10.33, five points for moving average, average, formula then starting from b13 left click hold and go up to july right up to b9 so that's 11. So then you can calculate for two points moving average so i will leave it to you guys uh, give it a go again it's very simple method not very complex right uh, so some of the drawbacks you can think of here that when you use the simple moving average method, we are given, given equal weights to all the previous periods. Okay, so I'll come to that in a minute, why that's important and what we mean by the equal weights. And the other thing is you can only predict one period ahead. So I'm going to go back to the whiteboard. So if I ask you to calculate or predict for January, next here so in order to do that prediction i need to know the actual for december i don't have that at the moment so i can only plan for one period ahead so in order to have some visibility and plan my operations better i also like to predict a number of periods ahead so that i can plan better right so predicting one period ahead is not good enough there are a number of variations do, you can do at moving averages. Uh, so we will not go into details of those because you will cover those in case you're taking the business uh, forecasting and predictive analytics course, which is COM395. So in that course, we go in a lot more details. But that's one of the drawbacks. You can only predict uh, one period ahead by using simple moving average. So that brings us to the next one, weighted moving average. So weighted moving average is a variation of a simple moving average method. So in simple moving average, we assign equal weights to all the data points that we are considering in the forecasting process. However, in the weighted moving average, we provide different weights to the historical data. So when I say different weights, more recent data, we give it more weight. 
So assigning larger weights to the recent periods provides you an advantage that your forecast is more reflective of recent observations or recent actual demand data. So let's explore the concept of equal weights before we move any further. So in the previous slide, we're trying to predict for August, right? So the forecast for August, so using three points moving average, the forecast for August was actual for July plus actual for June plus actual for May divided by three. If you solve this mathematically, what you're doing here is one over three actual for July plus one over three actual for June plus one over three actual for me. So this implies that for each of these periods you have 0 0.33 weight that's being assigned right for June and July. So we're giving equal importance to all the periods that we're using in the forecast. However in the weighted moving average we are going to provide more weights to the most recent period. So there's some consideration that should keep in mind. Uh, so there's no rule of thumb that will let you choose the optimal weights as from trial and error. So you may try different sets of weights and try to forecast. So whatever combination of weights gives you better forecast is arguing to your optimal weights. But from your exam and the assignment viewpoint I will not ask you to do a trial and error. I will provide you the weights. Okay, so when you're assigning those weights, you must keep in mind that all of your weights must add up to one and the highest weight should associate with the most recent actual. The most common mistake I have seen in exams is I sometimes I give weights and people use the smaller weight with the most recent demand. So no, always highest weight to the most recent. So whenever you get the set of weights, always arrange the highest to lowest right and the most recent goes with the highest and least goes with the very last data point that you're going to select from uh, from the historical uh, time series so let's explore the formula and let's apply it so we're working with same data set so we have periods here in the form of months and items sold which represents the actual demand and we want to forecast demand for sorry forecast for december using weighted moving average WMA where the weights are given as 0 0.1, 0 0.3 and 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 is the highest weight, 0 0.1 is the lowest. So just to emphasize some points from here, the sum of all weights is 1, right? So we're good with that. So as I said earlier, whenever you got any weights, always put them from lowest, uh, highest to lowest, ascending order. So when we're predicting for forecasts for December, the highest weight is 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 multiplied by 17. So that's what I have most recent period, November, right? So this is the most recent and thus we are going towards the historical data going into past and past. So 0 0.3 multiplied by 10 plus 0 0.1 multiplied by 4. So once you solve this, uh, so you'll have a forecast as 13.6. If you're calculating this forecast and not considering the order of weights, I have seen lots of times students will go like this. This is wrong because in this case you're giving most weight to the to the actual which is furthest in a in the selected data set so this will be wrong this is correct always use weights in highest to lowest order right in the descending order now let's go back to excel so we want to calculate the demand for december using weighted moving average so i have 0 0.6 multiplied by b13 that's where actual is for november 0 0.3 multiply by actual for october so which is b12 0 0.1 multiplied by b11 that's for september so that gives you 13.60 so that concludes moving average and weighted moving average
So again, these both methods are simple. Weighted moving average provides you advantage as you can assign the higher weights to the most recent actual demand so that you can better represent the, uh, represent the time series. Slightly complex than the simple moving average because you need to decide on the weights. Right? And there's no formula that can give you optimal weights unless you go for optimization methods, right? So if you have any questions, reach me out, uh, ask during live sessions. Uh, I will see you in the next video and we'll talk about exponential smoothing.